On this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, my competitor sitting down with Tim Jensen, the Chief Operating Officer of Grunt Style. He is a fellow Marine and a combat veteran at that. So, without further ado, Mr. Tim Jensen, welcome to Cigars and Sea Stories. What's up, killers? How you doing? Yutting and shutting. There you go. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, How's great life? To... Uh, it's great. Things are great. Things are great. Uh, you know, couldn't be more excited to be on the show with you guys here at uh, Cigars and Sea Stories and uh, talk a little bit about Grunt Style. I know you got a, a, a good introduction to the company uh, with Dan Alaric, and uh, <laughs> always great to to hear him talking about the brand and the wonderful things that we do over at Grunt Style. So uh, here I am, uh, and I'm just really uh, just following up on some good trash. Nice. Very cool. So what actually so, introduced you into Grunt Style? Um, well, it's, uh, it's kind of a funny story. Uh, you know, I was a union carpenter here in Chicago and I really, really hated my job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yep. it, was, okay. it, was great. it was great money, but, uh, you know, it, you know, you're working with people that, you know, don't sober up till about nine thirty, and, you know, you have to carry them most of the day because they don't want to do the work and their jobs are protected because they're union and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and I, I told myself I wanted to be out of it by the time I was 30. Um, and I kind of held true to that goal. I got out of the uh, union at 31 and, uh, you know, executed on the post 9-11 GI Bill and got myself an education. Um, I got a, a bachelor's degree in creating video games. Uh, so, uh, Hell yes. In, yes, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, it got to the point, uh, I was doing a lot of comic books. Um, you know, I published seven comic books on my own uh, with some uh, great writers um, my first comic book was uh, uh, labeled the best independent comic book at Wizard World Chicago 2010. So it was something really cool. Um, Very cool. And um, but that wasn't paying the bills. And my wife was like, yeah, "You need to get a job. <laughs> get uh, yourself a real job, man." Yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, the struggling artist gig wasn't working. Uh, that's, that's, that's <laughs> yes. Too much, you know? Uh, she's like, well, a struggling artist, that means you just suck. And I'm like, ooh, okay, time to get to work. <laughs> right. Damn. Nothing uh, like the ladies to freaking yeah. break it down for us. Absolutely, absolutely. Love my uh, wife to death. Uh, she she oh, definitely dude. keeps me going. Every keep wife it, should. It, every keep wife it realer needs to than anybody. That. Yes. <laughs> dude, when I told my gotta, wife that I had that a. When I told my wife that I had a TED Talk, she was like, don't fall off the stage. No, don't fall off the stage. Don't let your head knock you off the stage, Mike. Right. right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Gee Willikers. I can totally see her saying some yeah, shit of course. like that, too. Of course. Oh, She's there with a pin. They know how to a... drive deep. What's that? <laughs> they said that they know how to get it in deep to, to really oh, yeah. get you. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Women, women so, know uh, how to cut you down. Night, yeah. Knights yeah. of the Long Knives is what I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> keep going, Tim. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, no worries. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I saw an ad. You know, I was just surfing around. I applied to all these different places. Uh, you know, tried to get a job, uh, you know, using my degree, and it just wasn't working out. The market was pretty saturated uh, with uh, people coming out of school, and there were no jobs because uh, the market was still in kind of turmoil. So, um, you know, I saw an ad on Craigslist for a company called Grunt Style, and I was like, well, what the hell is this? And, you know, they had a position for graphic design. I was like, okay, I, I can do this. And I applied and uh, got an interview, uh, got turned down uh, for that position by Daniel. Uh, it's the first time I really got turned down for anything in my life. And I was pretty disappointed because um, when I walked into that building, you could just feel that, that, that sense of, you know, pride and um, camaraderie. And it was something unique, something different. Yeah. And uh, I felt really disappointed and I was leaving and uh, on the way home, Daniel called me up on the phone, and you know, he's like, I, "You know, there's something about you. I need you on my team." And uh, I, you know, I got a position open. I was like, "Well, what is it?" He's like, "It's folding shirts." And I was like, "You know what? I'll take it. I need it. I just need work, and you know, um, I see what you got going on there, and I just want to be a part of it." And you know, never even cared about what the the rate of pay was, and you know, started the next day, and that was kind of the beginning of uh, the story. And 
you know, went from, uh, you know, folding shirts all the way through creating, you know, several positions, uh, you know, the lead press operator to production manager to operations manager, and now the chief operating officer of the company. So I've been there. Tomorrow, coincidentally, is my four-year anniversary of the company. So um, it's kind nice. of really, really an awesome, awesome gig and uh, just been absolutely wonderful to see how the company has grown over the last four years. Nice. So Tim, Tim, you're an O three. You were, you were, an O three eleven. Oh yeah, Is that oh, right. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Here you are. <laughs> yeah. So 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 am I. I'm a fellow O three. Well, we're both O threes, but um, I started my Marine Corps career as an O three eleven. So oh, nice. pretty awesome. Yeah, Good I, stuff. You know, an ultra transparency. I uh, I started out as an AM tracker and uh, nice, <laughs> you know, nice. Hard, yeah, yeah. So you know, the, it was a uh, it was interesting. You know, working with uh, you know the grunts and you know from the Amtrak side, we're always like these fucking guys. Excuse my language, but <laughs> you know, you're putting uh, pennies in the in the seals and taking taking guys out in the ocean and trying to you know really get you guys all wild up and you know right. you see grunts puking in the their <laughs> Kevlar and all sorts of trash. So I I take That's some uh, so I I moved from the army or from the Marine Corps to the army. And the the uh, I worked with some mechanized guys, and they like to call the grunts uh, crunchies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know if you Amtrakers call them the same thing or not. Well, but same, yeah, same thing. You know, you, crunchies. You, you don't, Dude, don't the weapons you, uh, guys, we would call them crunchies. Yeah, that's awesome. Because <laughs> yeah. I was thinking before you move anywhere, you got to check your tracks, make sure no the grunts. Uh, sleeping up in your track well. Yeah, so what what were your years of service? Uh, I joined the Marine Corps in '97 and uh, did a four years fleet time. Uh, got out and then re-listed after 9/11. Uh, the whole deal went down there, and um, yeah. there was a reserve unit up here in Chicago. Uh, first got put into the INI staff because you know, there was no slots for 1833s right. um, in the area up here, um, and. Then I heard the the unit was deploying. I was like talking to this major. I'm like, you got to get me into this unit. And um, I, they, he got me over to the weapon side, and um, they put me through uh, uh, the the whole rigors of uh, OJT into the O3 field. And, nice. Um, so I got O3 qualified right before we deployed to Iraq, and it was uh, it was an awesome thing to go uh, to a combat zone uh, as an O311. It's probably one of the proudest moments, other than begin, getting my Eagle Globe and Anchor uh, back at Paris Island. So it was a it was a wonderful thing. Right. See, Michael, Michael, that's so nice to actually <laughs> talk to another uh, Marine. That's a that's a Paris Island guy. Because mm. Tim, I, I can tell you that I'm far outnumbered always by these <laughs> West Coast freaking Hollywood guys, right? Yeah. So so finally, I meet another uh, you know Paris Island guy. Sand sunglasses, oh, uh, six packs. Mm. Mm, yeah. So where where are you from originally? Are you from the Chicago area or? Yeah, uh, so I was I was born here in Chicago. Uh, my family, uh, I got a pretty large family that you know uh, made its home here. And um, but uh, I had the opportunity when I was younger. My uh, parents, um, we moved a lot, and um, not a, of a military family or anything, but uh, just due to the, the nature of my father's job and my mom's, uh, we we're always moving around and. and um, lived in several different states, but I ended up in North Carolina. That's where I spent most of my formative three years. I okay. uh, graduated high school outside of Raleigh. And, uh, yeah, I really consider North Carolina my home. It's, you know, the place where I hope I retire one day. Yeah, that's where Mike's at right now, if you didn't know. So yeah. Fucking yeah. loving life down yeah, here. Now, it's going to be like so, 70 degrees tomorrow. Shut it's your socks. Fucking beautiful. <laughs> shut Woo! Your sock. So, yeah, it's almost 70 degrees here today, which is uh, – Pretty abnormal for Chicago weather. Yeah, it is, especially oh, in so. February. I'm I am originally from from Illinois myself. Uh, I was born born in Hinsdale, Illinois, oh, um, and then I lived uh, grew up in a town called Princeton, which is a nowhere nothingville off of I eighty, like downstate a little bit. And then I lived in Bloomington Normal until I joined high school. Until I went to high school, which I went to high school in Connecticut, but. Yeah, man. Either way, you know, uh, Chicago. It's it's a unique place. Uh, it is. It really, it's awesome. I get the, 
Yeah, yeah. I get to travel a lot uh, with the company, and I get to sell all these different areas. You know, New York City, L.A., you know, all these big areas, Dallas, and stuff like that. But you know, the one thing that I've noticed about Chicago, it is probably the cleanest city uh, oh, yeah, that absolutely. I've seen in, in all my travels. Um, and you know, the unfortunate thing is that you know it's uh, surrounded by you know uh, or infested with this this liberal thought on you know the state of Illinois is not beyond, very beyond free. liberal, really. <laughs> Yeah, it's right. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. We so my dad, my dad still lives in. He lives in Joliet. Um, oh, yeah. So I get all the uh, oh, the deep info on the Illinois politics because he's <laughs> all up in it. So I just like, holy hell, man! So it's, it's crazy. All... It's yeah, freaking it took out me, there. Took me six months to get my concealed carry license and like five hundred dollars to get that. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, luckily, you luckily, text... you even got it. Cause yeah, yeah, right. A few right. years ago, they didn't even offer it. So yeah, yeah. In yeah. Texas, you can walk right into the freaking Walmart, and they'll give you one. <laughs> right. See, I live in New York now, so I am in a similar sort of state as you, um, which is quite left leaning. Yeah. Um, so I, I get it, man. I get it. Yeah. Screw all that noise. Yeah, and that's why Michael moved to from Taxachusetts or. Right, uh, yeah. whatever you want to call it, to North Carolina. So. Yeah, yeah. Was, you know, uh, like North Carolina, living around South Raleigh was was, was great. Um, we had about seven acres of property, and you know, it was one of those things. You, I don't know if it's the same way now, but you know, back uh, back in the nineties, you were able to just uh, shoot your rip, uh, rifle right off the back porch, and yeah, nobody gave yes. a hell. It's like Fab yeah. Invictus. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that that that's where Michael lived until like last week was uh, a place that we. We uh, lovingly called Fob and Victus because we could literally <laughs> just stand on the back of the uh, deck and just shoot shit all day long. So. Uh, maybe. Dude, I don't, I don't, uh, three deer of my own, and then my buddy Trey dumped two right in the backyard. Yeah, <laughs> under, like in a hide site underneath the freaking deck. <laughs> yep. Funny, funny story. I, I was down in Texas uh, not too long ago. Um, and we're doing, uh, uh, I'm part of a, a long range shooting team. Uh, and, uh, we were down in for this PRS finale, uh, hanging out with a bunch of the army marksmanship shooters. And, um, you know, we get into this, this place, uh, our lodge, uh, but it's in the middle of town. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, from the living room, we open the sliding glass door and just start shooting at deer that are just uh, running around like three, you know, <laughs> three range deer. Uh, <laughs> and uh, down there, uh, I guess the, um, the there's a deer that is um, invasive, an invasive species. Uh, so you don't need tags and anything to hunt it. So uh, they were just popping, popping off deer left and right. You know, then we wait to cover darkness, go out and skin it and uh, bring back the meat and just cook it up on the grill. I'm like, this, oh, I can yeah, do this man. every day. Yeah. absolutely you just described heaven that's fantastic pretty much heaven yeah our other our other buddy uh lives down there in texas now uh tim yeah uh way yeah, down yeah. south but yeah man oh i love freaking texas there's something about yeah. some texas that's pretty yeah. awesome see i it's saw a whole different world. <laughs> oh yeah absolutely well and ever since i watched this episode of meat eater where they oh were, yeah babe. they went out there and they're shooting sandhill crane and I guess ribeye, ribeye of the sky, baby. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna eat the fuck out of some sandhill crane. That sounds That's delicious. Right. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Well, I'm gonna go out there with a cannon and drop some sandhill, dude. They're just yeah. ripping the breasts out those things. I guess supposedly it's like two a day is their bag limit. Yeah, fantastic. Why don't you go out there yeah. with like eight dudes, man? It's on, right? Yeah. Oh. Real. <laughs> Rip eye of the sky, brother. That's what they call them. Dude, there's so many things that I need to eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just drop me off out in the wilderness with a shit ton of canned vegetables. Get get like, out there like Ted yeah. Nugent, like have with a that, knife. Have that shit strategically placed so you don't have to carry all that load. Right? Exactly, because you're gonna See, need like, sides. You know, like you're getting the protein. Get the get the get the drop the the 
airdrop of that shit. But she literally hit the wood line with like a cast iron skillet and the freaking K bar, right. and it's all on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, like, yeah. all right, I'm good. Well, have see, you guys ever done those uh, those pig those pig sticks where uh, you know the pig hunting where they just give you a knife and you go into the into the you know, oh the my god, dude, that's like some, thing. that's some way manlier shit than I think I need to do I, at this. I, I, I want to do that. I want to do that. Rock and assless myself. chaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get myself into that one one of these days. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, there was a guy, I saw a YouTube video the other day of a guy killing a fucking sable with a spear. Okay, <laughs> so if you don't know what a sable is, it stands, all, you know, between like five and six foot tall at the shoulder. And then it's got gigantic horns that come out the top of it. It's not actual antlers. It's like two separate, you know, three foot long horns. And he's up in this tree just kind of chilling. You know how it is. Like, you wait until they calm down and maybe you can get a quarter away. I don't know if you're a bow hunter, but, you know, you're looking for that shot. Old boy just whack, spears this mud trucker. I mean, it maybe went maybe like 60, 80 yards before it was just done, sir, done. But, I mean, oh, that's so badass. Like, fuck (laughs) yeah, I want to hunt someone with a spear. Like, yes. yes. I mean, a Razorback? Mm, maybe not. You know, I'm bringing my 35. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to get killed like the king on Game of Thrones or anything. Like the freaking horse, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, you know, I I just in my old age, my advanced age, I'm starting to get a little just comfortable. I think, and some some of the shit I would have done ten years ago is just not happening anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So same same. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but dude, you're stomping around the woods at night, you know, with some moonbeams and a 35 Marlin Fuck. lever action, straight straight hunting swine, like, sh- 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 you know, Go I mean, on. that's like men on awesome. horseback used to shoot fucking buffalo with those things in the Great Plain. They're definitely yeah, going to drop a swine, you know, if they're like, they're like 150 and in, which if you take a shot on a hog that's over 150 yards away, I mean, that's shocking. At least out here, you know, but it's my understanding that a lot of those hogs, you know, used to be like, um, you know, kept in 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 farms and shit and then just get let loose or they break out and then they become all feral. And yeah, so they're like straight up feral hogs, not like wild boar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It takes, I think, one generation. Yeah. Yeah. So, Tim, tell me about um. Don't you have a show on Veteran Radio Syndicate? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, it's called Short Timers Radio. Uh, nice, nice name. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of uh, my co-hosts is uh, Dan, uh, who's the CEO and owner of the station. Uh, so we put together this show, uh, I think, probably about a year, year and a half ago. Um, and uh, you can catch it on uh, Facebook, on the Veteran Radio Syndicate, and we share it all over. We have a Short Timers Facebook page. Um, and it's, you know, just two Marines, uh, and then we have our, 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 our guy, Justin, that will pop in from uh, now and again and another Marine and we just get, you know, really shitty and drink, drink some good liquor. And, uh, <laughs> last night, uh, we had a clown on a former Ranger bat dude, uh, who has a, <laughs> a character called spicy, the clown. And we had him spicy. on last night. It was pretty great. <laughs> is he, That's is awesome. he like, uh. Is he a you know deplorable clown or is he oh, a yes. yeah? He is not. The, he is not the clown that you would want to bring around your children <laughs> <laughs> or your coworkers. It's like some uh, some Captain Howdy shit going down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's bad. It's bad. Great guy though. <laughs> Great guy. That's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. But yeah, we do that show. Uh, it, it, it's it's a lot of fun. You know, we just get the. You know, I'm, I'm sure much like uh, what you guys have here in the sense that you just get a bunch of good veterans together and, you know, share stories, uh, you know, and, and really just have a good time. So what is your drink of choice? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, I am a Jameson man myself, mm-hmm. uh, but I've been finding I... myself getting into some uh, some finer bourbons lately. Really? I yeah. am a uh, I am a whiskey man myself. Uh, as we speak, I'm drinking. Oh, I'm going a little lighter tonight. I'm drinking a Canadian Club, but uh, <laughs> the Canadian whiskey I get into it. But uh, the Irish whiskey and the bourbon are probably my favorites. But I'll also throw in Scotch. You know, fuck it. Yeah. If it's brown 
pretty much I'm drinking that shit. Yeah. I don't, um, I don't drink when it comes beer. down to it, you know. <laughs> Not so, me. I'm yeah. eating peyote buttons like Smarties candies. That's right. You are. <laughs> right I'm on. fucking seeing shit for the longest time. I thought this interview was with a leprechaun, but you guys carry on. <laughs> that's Damn whoa. It. That's some. Mm. You know, <laughs> so so other projects you've got going on, Tim. Tell us, tell us anything, uh, anything that you can uh, that's not too super secret squirrel uh, oh, going sure. on. Absolutely. Well, we got a uh, you know Grunt Fest. Uh, we got a lot of events coming up that are always fun. Uh, we like to take these things out on the road. Actually, we'll be out in the Raleigh area on March twenty fifth. Uh, See, I heard a rumor about that. I heard a rumor about that. That's pretty awesome. You're not going to want to miss this, gents. It's going to be the party of 2017. Oh my uh, god! I think I, I think I might have to make a special trip down there. Yeah. Uh, crash, you, crash you, on you, Penny's yeah, new couch. There you go. You'd be shortchanging yourself if you did it. I hear you. Yeah, um, and then we got the you know some really other, uh, some really great things happening with uh, new products coming out. Um, the way. Uh, you know, Dan, uh, I think covered it a little bit uh, um, uh, and when he was on. Uh, we had we've done some changes inside the company that uh, that we feel is going to be extraordinary in the ability to just bring more quality product to people. Um, you know, right now we're we're really enjoying some great things uh, in the sense that you know nobody can hang with our fulfillment. Uh, we're getting product uh, into the customers' hands as fast as possible. Uh, we have some really great uh, product offerings. Um, we have some really cool stuff coming out that's going to kind of change the game, uh, we feel, in a lot of different uh, respects. Um, and mm-hmm. just, it's really an exciting time um, you know, for being in the company, watching what we're, uh, what we're doing. Uh, we got you know, NASCAR. we got a driver that's uh, got uh, in the Camping World Truck Series. Uh, so you'll be able to see uh, uh, Grunt Style on the, on the circuit. Ah, that's cool. Doing, doing four lefts for two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Draft him! <laughs> Draft them. I don't know what the fuck that means, dude. I would honestly, I would go to those races and quote Talladega Nights the entire time. That's all that I would do. So I would, they have I would the... shake and bake with guys all day. <laughs> oh yeah, they have uh, the Juliet Motor Speedway here, uh, um, and they do all the NASCAR stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and early on, uh, you know, I, I probably went to the first five years, and you know, I'm not a NASCAR fan at all. Um, but uh, you know, the first five years. I would go to this thing and just party outside because that's where everybody was having a great time. And, and then, you know, everybody would go in and, you know, it's like the whole well, party's not stopping. You're just going to go and, like, kind of everybody leaves their, their coolers out and just start drinking other people's beer and wandering all over the place. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it was, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's cool. Uh, you know, um, the really just uh, there's so much great things happening. Um, and you just... Uh, for those of uh, of the fans out there listening, just keep your eye open, and you know and it's going to be a lot of fun this year. So I I'm my recording studio is right inside my closet here. Okay, it's a walk-in <laughs> closet in my house, so I, I it's getting a little warm in here. So I just took off my sweatshirt, and I realized that I'm wearing a grunt style fucking t-shirt. Well, there you go. That there shit's go. no joke. For for those I love, I will sacrifice. That's oh, yeah, what that's I'm wearing. Good. Yeah, man. Yeah. That shit's yeah, we have, funny. We've got about uh, you know two point three, two point four million products out in the world right now. Um, by the end of this year, we expect to have well over five. Uh, so it's uh, a lot of lot of a uh, lot of traction. You know, people just love. I think what really you know, I think Dan put it re- really good when he was talking about it. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. Um, but I think what really people enjoy about the company, it's not the it's not the shirts and and the funny you know. Um, you know, sayings on them that a lot of people kind of identify with. Uh, I think it's more of the that sense of pride um, and what what Run Style is actually bringing to the table in sense of pride and self, pride in military, pride in country. Um, and you know, it's it's really interesting, especially the way the the country is going right now. Um, I think it's really resonating with uh, the people that truly understand that America is an exceptional place, that America is the greatest planet, or I'm sorry, the greatest country on the planet. Um, and in, in, in human history. So I think uh, you know, we do a really good uh, job of, of, of showing and exhibiting that pride. And you know, uh, we're just so thankful that people are enjoying it. So I've got to give one of your employees a shout out. Um, oh, God, how do you say his last name? 
it's his name. His first name is Brian, and it's no, Duzak. Is that Duzak? Yeah, yeah he, do. So he he uh, we've we've actually looked at some uh, custom made stuff through you guys. This was years, probably like two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and Brian was our was our our uh, point of contact, and he's the man. That's all I got to say. So I want to give him some props on here. Um, Brian Duzak, we love you. And uh, you did a lot of good things for us. But, uh, you know, <laughs> just want to give him a yeah. shout out. Absolutely. He's a, he's one of uh, he, one of the older um, employees at the company. I think there's only three of us left of the original crew that was uh, brought on to uh, in the early days uh, back in, what, 2013. Um and Duzak is one of them, uh, and coincidentally, the other is another salesman, Travis Naparstak, and great guys. You know, it's uh, really, really cool to, to, to be part of uh, that type of the beginning. And, you know, him, the three of us will talk uh, every now and again and just, you know, reminisce over the old days and, and how fast this company has grown and all the new people. I mean, we got 200 employees now, so it's It's, it's crazy. It's incredible. just crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. nuts. That is not. That's very cool. Very cool. Hell yeah, yeah man. All right, so I got to ask. You were gnawing on a cigar in the sandbox. Were you thinking to yourself, hey, I'm going to be the COO someday? No, or... no. <laughs> right? So you do, You deploy your grunt. Where'd you deploy to? I'm sorry. I missed that. Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, I've deployed uh, to the Triangle of Death 0405. Uh, so we yeah, yeah, we were working in the uh, Mamadia Yusufia area. Um, you know, back in that those days, it was the wild west of uh, Iraq, and you know, we were uh, part of Phantom Fury. Um, well, the uh, main effort was pushing through Fallujah. A lot of the uh, uh, insurgency uh, had made their home in the Yusufia area, so you know, we got to really have a lot of fun over there. We did a, a, an incredible job, uh, you know, rooting out all those uh, motherfuckers and. Um, it was a it was a great time to be a marine. I I never thought uh, I would be doing this, and I certainly never thought I was going to make it out of that hellhole uh, because it was almost right. like right. Uh, from September to April, you know, in your face combat every day. You know, right. Uh, my platoon at forty four, we hit, we got hit forty four times with IEDs. Uh, my my vehicle, um, I took four strikes, and lost my driver, um, and uh, it was. It was a crazy time to 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 be alive, but it was uh, absolutely the best time to be a marine. Right. So got out as an E five, correct? Yeah, yeah, oh, sergeant. Yep. Greatest rank in the Marine Corps, if, if you Fuck ask me. Yes, it no. is. No, no way, dude. Corporal is is <laughs> uh, Lance Corporal. Uh, corporal. Corp, Lance Get Corporal the might be the best. Cor- Lance Corporal, like senior Lance Corporal, that terminal Lance Fuck rank. That shit. That's pretty fucking awesome, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, I left uh, because I didn't. I didn't hit NCO until I went into the army. So, uh, so I always give Penny shit. So, and that's what a, a lot of the army guys don't understand is, you know, they they always ask, well, why does it take so, you know, why why do Marines, especially the infantry side, you know, you don't have that many NCOs. Right. People don't understand it takes forever in the Marine Corps to get ranked. Just the motherfucking cutting scores through the yeah, roof. Right. <laughs> well, and you know, experience in the infantry means that you've been to war, right? So, I mean, like to get salt on it, you need to deploy, and right. you know, hopefully, I'm using air otherwise, quotes otherwise here. Otherwise, you're not getting a, Otherwise, you're not getting promoted, right? right. <laughs> well, and I thought that it was bullshit because I was like, I was kind of showing the door. It's an O three, and I, I definitely am not blaming anybody for that. Don't get me wrong, but as a sergeant with a star on the combat action ribbon, they were like, man, we don't really care. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what? This is a bullshit. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Fuck you. Why? Because I haven't been to sergeant's course? Nah, it's more or less the tattoo shit. What? What? <laughs> Yeah, what? Go fuck Not yourself. a single person right. I've ever killed complained about my lack of professionalism. This is stupid. <laughs> this yeah. is dumb. You know? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, For you sure. have too many tattoos. Yeah, but they're marine tattoos, y'all. Right. Fuck. Like, what are yeah, you talking that's... about? I want to kill bodies. This is yeah, in, in a combat zone, you're not letting me roll my sleeves anyway. So what right. the fuck does it matter? Right. And yeah. they don't let you cross deck. No, 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 no. We got to bring you home. We're going to pass in review. You got to stand in people boxes. Yeah, fuck that. I would rather slay yeah. bodies. This is stupid. 
Garrison Garrison life as a Marine is fucking murder. Oh, you, know, you just, yeah, you just want to, God, you just want to kill yourself, right? Oh, it's so uh, bad. And like, I'll tell you, like some some of the nights you're you're sitting in, in your in, you know in your position uh, when you're forward and you're looking at the fucking stars and you're going, man, I just can't wait for that next fucking shot, man. And you're just fucking <laughs> biting, the teeth, waiting. You're like, where's it coming from? Where's it gonna come from? I just want to go fucking kill something. Hell yes. See, see my Marine Corps experience is so much different <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't have to deal with all the bullshit in the rear. Um. Because I, I moved from, so I got to uh, this, uh, to the, uh, the recon. Shut up, Dick. You so got I a got boot the, knife. So I got to the freaking, uh, <laughs> I got to the fleet and we had a guy come into our receiving barracks uh, there at Lejeune. Now, see, this is 1992. So oh, I'm dating okay. myself now. This is back this is in like, the old core. Back in the old, shut your mouth. <laughs> so, so, uh, so yeah. So, uh, and he comes in with a jump, you know, these gold wings and we're like, Ooh, that's, that's pretty on your freaking, you know, chest right there. Those, those wings and that silver dive bubble. Right. He had a mustache right. so and a horse. We're like looking at him going, Holy shit. Who the hell is this guy? So our, you know, school circle. So we get in the school circle and the handler comes out and he's like, this is staff sergeant so-and-so from, from second, uh, recon battalion. I look at my buddy and I go, what the fuck is recon? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I've been through SUI, the whole shit. And I look at him and I go, what the fuck is recon? He's like, he's like the high speed fucking sniper guys. And they like jump out of airplanes and shit. And I was like, Oh, what the fuck? So like, who wants to try out for recon? I raise my fucking hand like a dumbass. I look at him. Actually, I look at my buddy and go, you want to? And he's like, sure. Okay. And then the rest is history, basically. So <laughs> so I spent the rest of my time either deployed or on the beach. Yeah. So well, at, out on Onslow Beach. Just rocking right. so, and, and th That's when Recon was out at Onslow. And in the summer, our, our fucking uniform was either Silkies and a green t-shirt or UD t-shirts and a green t-shirt and in the winter it was fucking green sweats bro uh, that was I it. don't I don't envy you because of the amount of diesel that we dumped into that beach <laughs> that uh, yeah yeah summer. so you guys are were you down at courthouse bay at that time yeah, yeah. oh fuck yeah man we used to run <laughs> we used to run over to your uh the to the to the shopette that was there on fucking oh, yeah. courthouse bay because we had a shopette but it closed at like four so, you know, we're like, fuck, we got to run the courthouse and fucking run down there and get our whatever the fuck we had to get. It shit was funny. They're, so, they're those were the days, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. French Creek, right? That's where uh, Recon was out of? Well, that at that time, we were out of Onslow Beach. Oh, so you're at the beach. Okay. Yeah, so we actually we were actually on Onslow Beach, but this is before the hurricane took away all the white little buildings that were out there. So, oh, yeah. Boy, they yeah, man. So ninety four to nine or ninety two to ninety six, I was out there. So nice. yeah, man. Right. Uh, as Michael calls it, the fucking old core. Yeah, the old <laughs> core. Grandpa Bennett, tell us about Grandpa, the old core. Tell us about, so, tell us about me, recon me, back in the day. Let me ask you this question because you know this is a, a, something I always found uh, to be a bit interesting. What are your you know being a recon guy? You know what's your what's your thoughts of the stay Marines? On the stay guys. Yeah, I, they're brothers in arms. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, at, at the end of the day, um, they do some good work uh, if their battalions let them. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but I met some state guys that they just were ill, ill used. <laughs> um, but for the most part, the O three seventeen and now what the hell's their MOS now? It's something different. I, I don't know if it's O three seventeen. But at that time, they, they weren't primary MOSs. 0317 and 0321 weren't primaries. They were secondary MOSs. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, a lot, I, I've got a lot of good friends that were 0317s, you know. Um, and, you know, some of them did some really good shit as long as they were allowed. They kind of let them off the chain a little bit. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, the reason I ask is, you know, the, the experiences I've had some pretty wonky experiences with them, but, 
you know, two, two, two things in particular stand out is, you know, we'd always like drop these guys and insert them. Right. And then within an hour, they're calling back and saying, Hey, we need a pickup because our, our height has been spoiled. And it seems like that was happening every time we dropped them off somewhere. Yeah. That's uh, not cool. <laughs> Dude, that's not there supposed you go. To so that, that's a little weird. It's not supposed to happen. So <laughs> I guess it kind of all depends, you know. Did you yeah. kill somebody? Because then we'll come pick you up. Yeah, so I mean, if you're taking shots you? and shit, then I understand that your position is compromised. But if you haven't right. taken any shots, uh, you might as well stay there for a little while, you know. <laughs> so yeah. See, our so I understand. Our state bubbles loved rolling with weapons company. Well, they were embedded with weapons company. Sometimes they're with H and S. Sometimes they're with weapons. It depends on how they want to put them in the battalion to. But we yeah. had them with weapons, and they were the hooch next door. So what was cool is, like prior to doing a mission or something like that, we would literally just load them up in the back of the high back, right in front of our hooches roll them over to the clearing barrels. They would go con one on the way out the gate, which is totally not allowed. We didn't really give a shit. And then wound right. up just going out into the bill and they would see this bursting bomb, you know, essentially of all of these guys exiting these vehicles and going into say three or four houses at the same time and then collapsing back down onto the vehicles while the stay team would be inserted at that time. Right. Right, right. And then, yeah, I have a couple of buddies that were stay in Eighth Marines, um, and they had a hard time in Iraq. I mean, bad. Um, but out of all the guys that were in Iraq, they they're at least with Eighth Marines at that point, they were fucking just slaying bodies. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Three. I, I guess it really. I guess it really just depends on the battalion they're in, man. You know. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, because it's not. I'm, I'm sorry, but at the end of the day. Not all leadership is created equal. So, yeah. it's, you know, it's if, if, really you get, if you get stuck with some fucked up dudes in charge of you, yeah. you're fucked. And it's, it's almost and it's it's like just uh, sucks. the same with assault men, right? The 0351s, the yeah. most un underutilized fucking MOS in the Marine Corps, but can cause the most fucking damage. Right. Absolutely. You know, and, and it's kind of it's kind of like, you know, if you let them do their job, um, they'll change the fucking battlefield. Yeah, but yeah. if you if, if if you don't, I mean, you, you guys both know. I mean, you obviously, Tim, you 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 have done you know some long range shooting and and stuff like that, and you see what a and and you, Michael, as a as a designated marksman, I mean, you get out there and you see those weapon systems employed correctly will fucking change the the, the tide of a battle, yeah, and yeah. um and so so again, if you allow those guys to just have have what they need and the support that they need they'll fuck some shit up for you oh yeah i mean you you know that those guys have your back and um if you get into the shit those are guys that can bail you out you know yeah. but but again you've got to have the 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 leadership with the will to use them correctly so yeah, you're absolutely right you know we had uh you know, uh part of our mission in iraq was the um, you know uh, keeping route tampa between uh, Camp Kalsu and Abu Ghraib, keeping that, that area open. Uh, and it had been black for so long. Uh, and just by inserting some stay guys there, uh, you know, strategically along the, the route, we had turned that fucking that part of the highway from black to green within yeah, three man. months. Changes yeah. the fucking game. It, yeah. And, and it, it totally can, you know, so. And, and it's one of those things, too, is, is – you know, the Marine Corps, it's one of those things, too, is that there's snipers in all services, basically. Mm -hmm. And if if you are able to work together, um, yeah, shit kicking it can get real. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, and, oh, yeah. and that's one of those perfect units that's a crossover type unit to to allow guys to just, you know, work collectively. And again, too often you yeah. see too often you see them not properly utilized so yeah. Yeah. i well, guess that's, that's my opinion <laughs> that's something I think, as a, I think it's valid well that's something as a dm that we were always looking to kind of change the game for them because we wanted to be called up for those guardian angel positions yeah so fuck yeah we would still utilize them for reconnaissance or overwatch depending upon what the mission called for 
But as a DM, I mean, that's exactly what we're supposed to do. Like, if you have three Correct. teams and one DM and one of your teams, you just send that one in. You know, you're talking about four guys into a house, and then you would have two guys in a bedroom on Overwatch in a very limited hide perspective, two guys that are basically on support. And then yeah. the team, you know, you're talking about, like, screening. You're flowing through, you know, yeah. not a permanent... Oh wow! You're only gonna have four guys. No, I'm gonna have four guys in there for like ten minutes, and then we're gonna be out of here. Right, um, guys. I got, I'm, I'm chubbing up a little bit here. Right, right. Think about <laughs> but, it. But I think mean, about rolling. You know, dope. just think about think about that, guys. If if you know that you're rolling into a a zone that that's freaking, you know, got a reputation that's got a little heat. And you know that you've got a dude with an with a either like an M40 or a freaking sasser that's got your back. Yeah. You know that you're fucking coming out of there a little cockier than yeah. <laughs> than than yeah. than than if you didn't. You know what I mean? And it's a good so. psychological tool for for the guys on the ground. You know, for oh, you know, every time that we knew that uh, we had some you know snipers and the state guys on our backs, and just like you said. And, you go into that area just a, a little bit more aggressive because you know that there's uh, you don't have to be looking over your shoulder because you know someone's back there, you know. You know, yeah. real life Overwatch. Yeah. Well, it was like the last firefight. Yeah, it was pretty much the last firefight we were in. I was shooting the Sasser in overhead fire, and you could hear the guys like on the way back. They were saying, "Dude, you guys started opening it up with that Sasser," and we were like, "Fuck it, don't even bother bounding back. Just run. <laughs> just <laughs> go. Fun. Just go." Yeah, man. You know, just run. Fuck it. It doesn't matter. Not at this point. You know, because very few people want to come out and play when a weapon like that starts just, just even like cracking out right. over the battlefield. You know, yeah. people do not want to mess around with that, and for good reason. Also, you're like, the fuck is that? Is that a cannon? You know. <laughs> and then, meanwhile, we're working up a fire mission on artillery to shoot like you know direct fire. You know, let's just traverse this mother trucker straight shot all the way down. Triple seven howitzer compound gone. Yeah. It's still the most terrifying thing I've ever heard in my life is goddamn incoming. Oh, yeah. Because you have no idea where it's going to go. And hear that shit. Yeah. Well, in the 82s, they whistle. The shit rockets, they kind of scream a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You know. And the, might, yeah. <laughs> My gunny would always say, he's like, why do you get so fucking, you know, scared, Jensen? He's like, you're not going to hear the one that kills you. I'm like, fuck you, man. <laughs> yeah, fuck <laughs> off, bro. Ah, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Not awesome, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. But this yeah. is the same this is the same gunny that would, uh, you know, him and I would do, we'd go crawl up on some IEDs and start pulling out Comp B from the top of 155s and cutting debt cord and. You know, uh, just doing stupid shit. <laughs> no. Right. No. They got a whole course for that. EOD goes to it. They make the big bucks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So anyway. We just got brave enough. We were, we were like, we were getting hit so many times. We we're like, screw EOD. We'll just start. Uh, you know, we had the uh, 51s just start pulling C4 from uh, the, the, the uh, ASP. And you would roll with the, the that shit in the vehicles. And we just cut everything on the road ourselves. And we are just fuck, fuck it all. Nice. You just start doing like sympathetic munition detonations and shit like that, <laughs> <laughs> blowing shit up. Uh, shit. Yeah, 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 Every once sure. in a while, we'd pop IEDs. See, that was something where in Ramadi, uh, they didn't really want us. They let's let's back up a bit. Yeah, there was they, a guy the fucking proverbial they. There was a guy <laughs> who was killed uh, in the unit prior, which Wade actually knows the fellow Marine who was killed. And uh, it's because he shot his mark at 90. It blew up. Shrapnel snuck under the gunner's shield and hit him, like, in the aorta, in the mid-abdomen. So, uh, yeah, they were like, mm, let's not do that anymore. You know, just friendly <laughs> TTPs and shit. And so yeah. then eventually what it wound up being is if you had Rafis rounds in the Sasser, you could shoot. You know, IEDs and stuff. But we were in Hermati. It was just kind of different. You right. know, right. it was it was different in that aspect where, or you would, you'd see an IED where 
fuck, dude. They would do all sorts of stuff. They'd put them inside of gas cans and inside of bags and shit. One time they were uh, hacking people's legs off and putting 155s down the pant leg of, like, uh, you know, people's legs and shit. They found one in the median in Central. And the very first thing, when that went out, so, like, you know, it goes into truck one, truck one relays it across PRs to everybody else throughout the team. Very first question that comes up is, did it have a shoe in it? Did it have a foot, a sandal, anything? 20 <laughs> says it was a boot. No, fuck no. It's a sandal. But the guy had brown <laughs> eyes, too. And it's like, you know, just, just you know, that like, and then oh, our section leader is like, I'm shutting my PR off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the, some of the funniest, some of the funniest things I've ever heard were were in country. Just the, the shit that would come out of people's mouth. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Wait, it, I remember that night so distinctly because the truck in front of us had a one of those like pump BB guns, so that we can mm. shoot out lights, which is so great. These people are on, you know, it's not grid that's over there. Obviously, they're like spider webbing all of their wire into this neighborhood generator so that they can have <laughs> lights in the middle of the night and we're capping them out with a red rider bb gun <laughs> and just like a bunch of fucking assholes like yeah. hey leo when you do that do you feel like an asshole yeah for a little bit and then you know it goes away um <laughs> So they roll up on this truck i'll never forget this cuz it was one of the few times that we did a kill count Right, so my vehicle is not running, and I kind of had the windows cracked because it was balls hot. And they roll this Vic up, and it's right underneath of the street light. And you know, he pumps it up. You can hear him like clack, 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 clack on the inside of the truck. He stands up and pop. Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> It's just the middle of the night, and my truck is off, so everything is quiet, except for this dude who's just covered in shattered glass. Like, why'd you park right underneath me, you stupid fuck? And he's just out there like, ah, ah, son of a bitch. Like, it's in my eyes. Corporal, it's in my eyes. You know, and you just, you're trying really hard not to be the loudest guy laughing. Right, yeah, you know, and yeah. LT is like, God damn it, what the hell is going on back there? What the fuck? <laughs> hey, we found an ID on Central. It's down some dude's pant leg. Really? Is there a shoe? Is there a sandal? What What do we got on there? Yep. <laughs> I need more detail. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> just oh. in the stale night, disgusting cesspool air. You know, yeah. just... Ugh. That was the most unique fucking smell I've ever come Damn. across in my life. And it's like one, the country smelled like a zoo. Yes. Oh, yeah, man. Fucking yes. petting zoo, bro. <laughs> my buddy, my buddy Gibbs, he, we, were, we were out one day and he's like, it's got a fucking smell to it, doesn't it? You know? <laughs> it, bro. Yes, it does. Yes, uh, yes, it shit. does. Well, hopefully in about 30 years, we could all go back there and say, hey, I killed a guy on the street. Oh, fuck. I don't know, man. I don't know if I <laughs> want to go back. Like, what do you think, Mike? You're going back to Vermont? Yeah. Mm. Maybe yeah. if they make it like Las Vegas and shit, you know? Right. They, yeah. Right. If it's like <laughs> super over the top, maybe. Probably not, though. Dude, I went to Ramadi twice. I don't want to go back to that place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you ever go to Afghanistan or were you in Iraq? No, yeah. no, just Iraq. And uh, my brother and my sister went, uh, actually, two, my two brothers and my sister went to uh, Afghanistan. Um, and uh, it didn't seem like that much fun. I'm glad I didn't go over there. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's just, it's totally different. It's just a totally different war, a totally different experience. It's, yeah. uh, yeah, I asked, though, because, well, for one, it's, it's unique understanding what those two different experiences are like. But also, you know how Iraq kind of had its good times where it's like, yeah, I know that the bread maker probably stood on this, you know, in order to flatten it and shit. But Dodai and and kebab and, you know, all of that other shit is like really good. 
and it costs yeah, like five never, bucks. Never ate any of that shit because I saw when I asked one of the people there like how they make their bread and the, what those kilns were made of, and they're like yep. ah, it's made of cow shit. I'm like nope, <laughs> never gonna <laughs> eat it this. I'm good country. with never eating that ever. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> I ate the fuck out of some goddamn kebabs when we were overseas. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I got Saddam's revenge, but... Well, now, you know, I, I the time I spent in Bosnia, I'm hooked on that shit. This, this uh, They call it, like, uh, Savetchi, Savetchi or something like that. And it's these Savetchi, little uh, yeah. sausages. Holy shit. So, fucking our buddy Mirza, Mike... Oh yeah, yeah. Takes yeah. me to a Bosnian restaurant here in Syracuse, and I'm like hooked, man. I can't even get enough of it. Mm. You know, so. But that's a different animal. Different animal. See, yeah, yeah, and and then in Afghanistan, the food was totally different, but they were still cooking. You know, goat. It's just they were goat. making it different. Right. They, yeah. they weren't like grinding it and smushing it onto a giant skewer, rotating it over the fire. They were roasting it and then they yeah. put it on a palau palau is like long grain rice oh, that's got yep. nuts and cranberries and little fruit and shit like that all mixed in it's good <laughs> it's good you will lose some weight eating nothing but that shit though i'll tell you that much that is not what the grunt needs out there uh amongst <laughs> right. the vill so but it's better than mysteries you know i'll take like sloppy joe mre at least in 2011. It would be like Sloppy Joe MRE for lunch or something. You know, yeah. if we were out on OP or something like that. But everything else was... Dude, they made these, like, I, chips, like these potato. It was good. <clears throat> I say the one thing that I, I would really want to try again or or have, and I've been... You know, everybody says they make a good chai, but, like, the Iraq chai, maybe it was the fucking awful canal water that they were using but it had such a good taste that you can't find anywhere else like you right. try these little chai places here in the states and you know it's not even close but the chai the problem, you know, god is so good so the iraqi chai is good but the afghani chai has got semen in it so <laughs> <laughs> that's from all the right fucking chai boys right yeah, i was we just did, a... we did that episode already it's from a <laughs> minor so it's gonna be fine no, you're gonna be all right. Don't worry about that. Fuck. No, dude. See, but in Afghanistan, if they don't serve it to you piping hot, it's like disrespectful, you know. But yeah, I agree. I mean, they add so much sugar to that shit; it's just insane. It's like crazy, crazy sweet. Well, and especially they had these. The Afghans especially had these little hard candies. They kind of look like the heads of Lego guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they resembled that right. shape, and uh, you add two or three of those to some bubble and chai, and you were good. Which I mean, really hits the spot on a bone chilling hundred and twenty three degree day. So you know, it's something that you're just like, whew. You know what I could go for? You know, it's hotter than balls. Like I mean, real hot. Like when I sat down on the porter shitter, I could smell my balls and my feet at the same time. But I could right. go for a bubbling hot cup of chai right now. Well, here's, here's a good question. Here's a good question. So uh, the detainees in Iraq never knew how to use, you know, in the early days, let's say 04, right? You go into uh, like the detainee area and you, you go and use the fucking shitter in there and you see footprints on yes. the fucking shitter, right? Did the same thing in Afghanistan? Was it, was it similar to that type of issue? Yeah, oh yeah, they always squatted. <laughs> that was their thing. They thought it was dirty as shit that you would put your butt where somebody else put their butt. Like, they think right. that we're so gross that we would do that. Which, yeah. I mean... Except for, these are the guys that wipe their ass with their hand. Right, exactly. Right. And we're right. like, oh, yeah, you're gonna judge us. Oh, you're so fucking gross, What's dude? that jar of water for? <laughs> yeah, Fuck. <laughs> And you don't even have soap. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> Yuck, nasty. <laughs> you judgment. nasty motherfucker. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, how did the, yeah. <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth. Dude, bro. you think about... You just think about all of the, the, the hygiene logistics that are going on there. And you're just... <laughs> oh, like, which hand do I use? Shit. Oh, like, um, no. fuck. Um... 
So I do I'm this secret. I do the right. secret terrorist handshake with Muhammad with the right hand. <laughs> right. And then what's the left one for? It's jerking off and wiping my ass, but not in that order. Dad taught me. I'm Damn. trying to remember. <laughs> It's just so oh, filth. Yeah, man. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. See, but I think that it's funny also because the majority of the women in American society would rather squat on a public, you know, toilet also than touch sure. their butt cheeks sure. where another wife, you know. Yeah. My wife's know. like that. She doesn't want to sit on the toilet seat, especially in a public yeah. restroom. Meanwhile, I'm the guy yeah. like... Hey, Joe, you piss in here? Did you lift the seat? Let <laughs> Be honest with me. Did you lift the seat? We're going to have a fucking problem if you didn't, buddy. I'm going, you know what? <laughs> Fuck you. I'm going to the family restroom. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I'm a disabled vet. I'm doing it. I'm claiming mm. handicap something. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going, I'm taking my pants off. You ever do that? You ever, you ever be the single guy coming out of the family restroom in the airport? You ever Just done that one? Did you, you see my backpack? <laughs> There's a veteran tap on there. Did you see that? No, it gives a fuck. You just... <laughs> do you see that lady where there are three kids? One of them's got a fucking earache. Do you see what's going on here, Mike? You needed to shit with your pants off, didn't you? Wearing flip-flops. You disgust me. <laughs> you know, the judging. The judging eyes. <sighs> I'm that guy. Sometimes I just shit naked in there. You're you're welcome, America. I take the shirt off too. You know, you have a hot one the night before, right? You're like, right, yeah, right, the right, spicy dude. burrito taco Shit's bell sounds deep. good. Shit's getting wicked deep now. You know what I mean? <laughs> You've never gone full blown. What's See that? what you did, Tim? You <laughs> unleashed that shit on fucking America oh. with Michael. I'm telling you. Oh, very funny story. We we take we take this little fucking water oasis building right, and uh, my vehicles broke down. Um, the rest of the fucking um, platoons out on patrol doing uh, anti mortar, you know, counter mortar patrols and stuff like that. And there's this family that lives in there. Um, the family leaves. Uh, we take this place over, and um, there's a little canal, and then on the other side of the canal, there's a village that this thing feeds into, right? And uh, so we're sitting there, you know. Uh, Mortars start coming in on the town. I radio up to the uh, up to the actual. I'm like, hey, you know, we're taking some contact over here. He's like, you'll be fine. They're just probably you know shooting out. I'm like, well, you're not even in the same area where these mortars are coming from. Why don't you go that direction, asshole? <laughs> and uh, so it starts getting kind of crazy. They're shooting rockets at the the water tower, and you know, I've got my my Marines of five, and I have a couple of stay guys with me, and. and uh, and so we start taking off all the gear and the, um, uh, the 50 cal off the truck. Uh, we're setting claymores uh, up at the gate and we're pushing uh, the vehicle up against it. So in case they want to run a B-bed through it. Uh, and I'm, ha I'm passing out all the grenades to my Marines and making them do uh, uh, like patrol, uh, uh, patrolling around the, the facility. And it was probably like 2100 at night. And uh, it was uh, this corporal and uh, my driver and they're walking and uh, they're just shooting the shit and, they're all like high anxieties, this, that, and the other. And uh, <laughs> the shorter dude, Mendoza, is just walking and he disappears. And uh, LeBron, the corporal, looks around and he's like, Where the fuck? And he's <laughs> <laughs> Mendoza fell down into a fucking shit pit that was about five and a half feet deep and he went completely submerged into this motherfucker. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Ah, shit. <laughs> uh, see, I've been up to my armpits before, but I did not get the full submerge like oh, the dunk tank. Oh my god, that's horrible! Oh fuck! Right, he's all you got full, Ooh, full kit. Oh shit! Warming around, get trying to get out and shit. I was I'm just sitting on the top of the building with my uh, MVGs. I'm fucking dying. <laughs> <laughs> You're just watching this happen from oh, afar. Yeah. Like, what if he drowns in there? I don't know. I don't know. I'm dying. It said Corporal's probably going to get him. Oh, Jesus, dude. <laughs> ah, covered head to toe in to toe, somebody got else's. A, a few couple of good gulps. Oh, man. Some <laughs> got in there, huh? <laughs> he, he, was, uh, he got oh, sick. Oh, man. Oh my god, dude, that's, that's so bad. Like, I don't even, 
Oh, you know those weird chills that you get down the spine, you know? When when you're when you're thinking about getting your board checked, like that's the same that's the yeah. same feeling. I don't want to be covered in somebody else's shit, let alone yeah. like a couple of gulps. Imagine how long it takes to fill up that type that deep of a pit. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> oh god. Like Damn. It's horrible, bro. <gasps> Oh, you know what's in their Horrible. diet. Dude, just imagine if some peanuts got in there with it. Oh, oh my God, it's in your mouth. It's like another peanut that came out. <laughs> oh, oh, every, every fucking dude oh, listening oh, right now can taste this. Oh, oh, uh, 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 corn. Oh, it's like anything that lives through the entire... It's chunky. It's not pulp-free. They don't strain that shit before you hop in. Oh, that's so gross. Uh, all right. I'm thinking about it in my mouth. That's so gross. I'm sorry, Mendoza. From cigars and sea <laughs> stories to you. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah. Wow. Feel your pain. Well, thank you for that. I really appreciate that solid yeah. visual, Tim. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. I always love to share a good shit joke. Yeah, <laughs> there's always good ones. We have a bunch of those. We seem to have a lot of those on our episodes. <laughs> It's like the worst part about being over there. I mean, in my opinion, it really is the worst part. It's just, you don't really think about where all that shit goes, you know, until you have wag bags and (laughs) you're like, I got to stir what? And you want me to light it on fire, you know, and stuff like that. My mouth's like watering right now, bro. Uh, <laughs> gonna knock it off. <laughs> you don't want like JP eight mo gas and turd fumes. You don't. That's not. That's yeah. not like routine, no, dude. I fuck. I opened my sea bag when I got home, and it smelled like that. And I was just like, oh, oh, <laughs> good time, right? Thank like, you like you're not supposed to smell that amongst the dill of Southern California. That's not cool. <laughs> That's no boy, no. Yeah, dude. Ugh. Oh man, disgusting. Anyway, all right. Hey, whoa. All right, we gotta wrap stuff up here. If you would please give us some of these uh, these links for where people can get in touch with you, follow you, uh, all of that other good stuff. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, check out the store at gruntstyle dot com. Uh, check us out on Facebook, um, and uh, we got American Grit, which is a uh, our magazine that has some really good content in there, always uh, interesting new articles that you know people really like to uh, to read, and they're pretty awesome. Got some great writers, uh, you know. Um, Alpha Outpost, uh, another company that uh, is part of the Grunt Style brand, um, and uh, it's uh, check us out. I mean, Short Timers Radio, listen to that. That's another great uh, place, and yeah. you know, maybe uh, one time we can all all of us can get together and have a a little podcast. It, uh, party if you will hell yeah yeah man <laughs> be great anytime you up. want just let us know there Absolutely. you go Absolutely. but i i do appreciate the time uh gentlemen and uh, it was a lot of fun and some good stories always i always love sharing some good uh some good stories <laughs> some good shit that stories <laughs> <laughs> nice. some shitty stories some shit oh. hell you like that shit boys <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. right in the mouth Oh. <laughs> horrible. well there you go that's why you listen to cigars and sea stories so if you would please subscribe rate and review the podcast we appreciate those five star reviews very much so so uh we're going to continue to share where you can review in a variety of different places we're on itunes stitcher player fm all of the android aggregators uh we're also on heroes media group is our podcast network that we are proud to be a part of Huge thank you to Spartan Media for doing a kick-ass website and veteranslist.us. You can get a featured membership half off by entering discount code Cigars and C. So, thank you so much, Tim Jensen of Grunt Style, as well as Alpha Outpost and American Grit and Veteran Radio Syndicate and all of these other different kick-ass things. And, I mean, also, biggest claim to fame, that fucking beard people if you haven't seen it you need to you need to look up tim he has some fancy facial follicles we're gonna be rubbing these beards together next month broseph 
We're going to be smoking go. and joking in Raleigh. It's going to be good. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Nice. Double Dutch <laughs> rudder. This is happening. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we cue the music. I will fly,